So we're looking at two formulas here, and these are sums for an arithmetic sequence. So what we want to do first is show how these two formulas are in fact the same thing. Now one of them, the first one here, tells us that it, we can find the sum of n terms of an arithmetic sequence if we know the first term, the last term, and how many terms we have in the actual sequence that we're adding up together. The second one, formula number two, what we need to know is the number of terms we're adding up, that's over here. We need to know the first term and we need to know the common difference. But it turns out that these are just different representations of the same thing. And I'm going to show how that's possible. So let's start off with the first formula. Let me copy it out over here. I have Sn. So S subscript N is equal to, I have the first term plus the last term. I'm dividing all this by 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this Tn here with the general expression. Now if you recall from lesson 1, Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 times D. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to substitute it into <coughs> my equation and also keep in mind that T1 is just another way of writing down A. So I have N, open bracket, a plus A plus N minus 1 times D, close bracket, and that is all over 2. Again, this business here, that replaces Tn, and this here replaces T1. Let's just take that out of the way. So, so far so good. I'm going to now collect like terms inside the bracket, so the two a's add together to give me 2a plus n minus 1 times d, close bracket, all over 2. <coughs> and if we take a look here, we're almost at what we want. I'm just going to rewrite this slightly differently. Okay, I'm going to write the n over 2 out in front, and that's times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And I'm just replacing the curve brackets here on the ends with the square brackets. And there you have it. We have an equivalent expression um, for the sum of an arithmetic sequence. Now, the restriction on the first formula, well, we have to know what the value of the first term is and the last term. Okay? So the restriction is that we don't know what d is which appears in the second. Okay, and we have to know, obviously, how many terms we're adding up. So let's look at some examples of this in action.